All right. Good evening, everyone. It's a, a rare, a rare occasion of me being live uh, at in the evening. It, it seems like it's you, Master Fairley. You're the you're the night owl. How are we doing, sir? Good, good. How are you? Yeah, I'm. You know, my my uh, my days and time is uh is crazy sometimes. I uh, you know, I, I was have have to have, to have a, a meeting on something. And I'm like, okay, how's 10 o'clock at night for me? And they're like, that's a little late. I'm like, well, that's the only time I'm a fan. <laughs> yeah, so. That's karate instructor uh, hours. <laughs> yeah, there, let me uh, share, let me just share this to a couple of places. Uh, to the page. And then uh, share that. Okay, you guys go. Let's see. So how's it going, sir? How you doing? Uh, it's good. It's been a crazy, you know, 2018 has been a pretty, um, 2018, you've 20, you went back in time. 2018. Yeah. That was going to say 2020. <laughs> I was going to say, I tells you where I want. I want to go back to 2018. <laughs> yeah. Right. I think all, we all do on that one. It was a more 2018, a more simpler time. <laughs> yeah. Simpler, simpler time. <laughs> you know, when it wasn't a pandemic and there wasn't everything else, you know, but yeah, 2020 has been, been pretty crazy. Um, as I'm sure everybody, everybody is aware, um, you know, we lost Grandmaster Baldwin in, uh, in January of 2020, before the pandemic and everything started. And, you know, really the, the thing that's been taking up my time and uh, my students' time and everybody's time over the last couple of weeks is um, putting together this, uh, this Indiegogo campaign to, um, to um, purchase the property and the studio to keep be able to keep to preserve it and rebuild it and keep it going because unfortunately Graham asked it's a it kind of a unfortunately it was you know in some ways a, a le last lesson from him to, to a lot of people is uh he had updated his will in a long time so he didn't have any provisions for the studio and or for the the, the building and the studio what he wanted done with it you know in, in you know I think he hadn't changed his will in like 25 years or something or 30 years. It was, it was some crazy amount of time. Um, so he didn't have a, you know, there wasn't a plan laid out for it. So unfortunately it then went into probate, went into the courts and went in through all these other things. So um, we, uh, you know, that, that kind of kicked off a whole chain of events and then COVID happened and it, it's just been, it's just been a, a roller coaster. So that led us to, um, and hopefully he, he's going to join us in, in, in soon is um, one of our students at the academy, Anthony Bracco, um, managed to, he's a, he's a business person. He has several of his businesses. He has a lot of contacts and things. He managed to forge, oh, hey, there he is. we can help him. Hey, Anthony, how are you? How you doing, Anthony? Hello. There you go. I was just saying, I was just talking talking about you. Actually, I said you managed to put together the um, the uh, the deal with um, Grandma Ashburn's family and his widow to to acquire the the uh, the studio property, and so that led us to then putting together with the help of and you know the, with the help of several several students, um, uh, one of them Daniel Greenwolf, who's a professional. Um, magician and uh um he uh helped us put together a uh indiegogo campaign to to raise these funds and you know so it's been it's been kind of a crazy year getting you know uh grandmaster one passing COVID happening you know the studio ha not being able to use the property because lawyers you know said it wasn't legally safe and all kinds of things like that and then developing this campaign to carry this forward it's been it's been kind of crazy um, but it's been, uh, you know, I know a Anthony and, my, and myself are the ones that are, that are out in front of this along with Danny and some other people, but it's been an effort by, by a ton of people that we have support from, you know, we, we may be the public face of it, but really there's a lot of people that are, that are supporting us and behind the scenes working with us and, and there, and, you know, they, they, they don't get mentioned all the time and I don't want them to not feel that they're, 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 you know, with us. I think, Anthony, you feel similar, I'm sure. Without a doubt. I mean, you know, there's Master Baldwin had so many students, you know, for so many years 
And uh, every one of them, I mean, the outpouring of emails and calls and what can I do to help? And, and part of it, even after, you know, we uh, start and, you know, people that maybe can't uh, pledge money or helping with, uh, you know, the possible renovations and, you know, and, and just chipping in anywhere they can. And, and truly, it's just the support alone is enough to keep pushing us along to keep moving forward because it, it hasn't been easy. Gotcha. Do me a favor, uh, Mr. Bracco, if you would, just introduce yourself and uh, tell the tell the people watching uh, who you are and, and kind of how you fit into this uh, story. All right, so uh, my name is Anthony Bracco. I have uh, been training with Quanjanim for just about 20 years now. Um, I'm a Samdan or a Sadan candidate at the moment. So I just finished my first test and you know, waiting for uh, some critiques and then we'll be moving forward with that process. Um, you know, I, I started with my, uh, both of my daughters. Uh, Justine is a third Don and she uh, resides in region five right now at school, college. And my uh, youngest daughter, Rachel, she is a E Don and she is in region five also in Milwaukee. So, um, uh, so, you know, it's a family uh, endeavor and uh, my wife, although she does not participate is as big a supporter as they come, you know, I think, uh, you know, um, you know, without that kind of support, you know, all the things that we've been able to do wouldn't be possible. So, uh, so that's my family history. And, you know, uh, I took the, I took my youngest to get karate lessons there. It was just dumb luck, you know, that I happened to end up there and I watched uh, Kwan Janim teach one class with my daughter and I was like, yep, this is the place. I was like, I knew right away. And, and I think I might think my next class was not even a week or two later. So my, theoretically, my daughter should probably outrank me, but she doesn't. So <laughs> well, she, she was a tiger and dragon. She didn't get an official rank until, you know, much later. That's right. So she's, uh, she's been training for two months, two weeks more than I have. So, uh, <laughs> but, uh, <That's> <laughs> yeah, we don't, like, you know, we don't like the reminder of that fact, you know, <laughs> especially with pro projects like you guys are uh, undertaking like you said, if a family member is not, is not on board, it just wouldn't happen, you know? So it's, it's same thing in our family and obviously same with, with you, you Dan, with, with Lauren, um, you know, my family's Tung Sudo lifers, my kids both train, um, you know, so when you guys, I've talked to Dan about this project, um, he's like, man, I, I want to help any way I, I possibly can. Um, cause I just know how much, uh, Quan Janim meant to you guys, region nine and, and the world. So, yeah, it, it, you know, we, we know him and, and love him cause we see him every, you know, every day and we spent so much time with him. And, um, it wasn't until I started, you know, traveling with him a little bit and going to worlds to realize really who he was, you know, we knew who he was. He was, he was the big fish in the small pond as we thought, you know, but once we, you know, I started traveling with them a little bit and, and then going to the worlds and just seeing all the, you know, really being opened up to the World Tung Sudo Association, just not our region, it, you know, um, you know, there, he, he touched a lot of people here and there. And then, you know, uh, you know, I, one of the proudest moments was not when I got my black belt, although when he put my picture on the wall, that was pretty cool. But I remember when he handed me a key to the studio so I can help teach was like i can't even believe that i have a key to the studio it was like you know it was, it was a big deal and you know i he's one of the most definitely one of the most important people in my life so uh, anything i can do to uh to carry on his teachings i, I it's the least i can do sure that's amazing i and i it's funny you said that i i i remember that moment too if you get a key it's like whoa <laughs> Yeah, it's like, yeah, it, 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 it's funny, but, you know, in, in a way, it was such a, it was just a big turning point, you know, it's just as far as, you know, hey, this guy trusts me with his that's students. Right. That's like, awesome. this is amazing. Hey, real quick, uh, before we continue, I just want to talk, uh, say hi to a few people. Um, the Dudgeons, so Lindsay and Peter are both watching from uh, Great Britain. They said it's 1 a.m. here, we're listening in bed. So thank you for the support and for, for checking us out. Uh, Brian Ormiston says hello. Zerberry uh, from Region 8. Lynn is Crifty says hi. Jordan Velez says hello as well. So we got some people watching out there. Um, 
So let's talk about, we, we talked a little bit before you uh, came on, uh, Anthony, about this year. So when did you guys have the studio until this year? So when did you have to, to kind of be out? Um, I was, was it, what? It was part way into COVID. I want to say it was probably about, was it May-ish? End of May, beginning of May, maybe? Might, it might not even have been that that far. I mean, I think... Uh... It was, yeah, it was, it was April, May, but yeah, you're probably right. It might not have been made into May. Yeah, because I, I think, you know, when uh, Mr. Berardi was promoted, I think that might have been the last official time we were in there. I don't know if we had any classes after that, and that was probably, it would have to be after what the master's clinic was supposed to be, so it was probably sometime in April. You know? well, we, we did teach some, we did do some classes from there, during you know some of the when we were recording classes or we were doing uh, zoom classes oh, we did the key bonk stuff and yeah so we did some of that from there I, I, I tell you the one thing we were talking about people we need to thank and and who've been helpful um and you know when they closed the doors we had we didn't have a place to train um master total and you know uh he's in the next town over share lives in the same town Quan uh and he opened his doors to us and our students so we can train with him and uh, at his studio all summer and, and it's continuing. And, it, you know, without that support, I mean, you know, we, we really would have been scattered like, you know, in the wind. So uh, he was, he's been a, as supportive and as important as anybody uh, this summer and this, you know, this year to us. Yeah. I talked to, to Dan throughout the, the summer and he, he talked about being able to, train outside with Master T and, and, and those guys. And that's amazing. And again, it just, it speaks volumes about the association and, and of course about, you know, Grandmaster Bodwin's, uh, I'm sure anyone in the association, but specifically Region 9 would, would do anything for you guys. Yeah, so. I, I, think, I think so. Um, you know, it was funny, you know, when we were starting the Indiegogo campaign, and uh, that that video that's at the end of that that you know the the launch video that we that we did, um, I know I reached out to you and um, you got me one and we got one from Aaron. That I'm tell her I'm still gonna we're still posting them. She, hers is gonna go up. Don't tell her not to not to worry. I'm seeing them popping up. I saw jo, Jovelle and Master Master Artika. But literally that Saturday, that day, we were talking in that you know that morning and Auntie and I are talking and we're like, oh maybe we should get some more and this and. And Anthony then calls Lauren, you know, uh, talked to Lauren, and, you know, was like, you know, I think we, I think, I really think we need some more. And then Lauren says to me, she's like, Dan, we, we really need some more. So I'm like, okay, let, let's, you know, how long do we have? And we talked to our guy, D Danny, who was Danny Myron or Green Wolf, who's doing the, uh, who's doing the video, putting it together. And he said, he said, okay, if you guys get them to me by three o'clock, I can get them in the video. I think at the time, Anthony, it was like, what, 1230? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we started, we started texting, calling, messaging people. And we had to have gotten 18 more videos in from people in that, in that two hour, in that two, two and a half hour time frame. you know, that then got incorporated into them. And there's still a bunch we haven't used yet, which are, we're still putting out there, but that was just the response of like, Hey, we need this. Can you do it for us? And they, 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 people stepped up and dropped them that fast. Can you talk about what what your what videos you're alluding to? The so th these are the um, the I train videos. When we were trying to think of you know think of this campaign and what what we were gonna you know, use talk about and use with it, um, not I, I, it's popped up a lot since and people have seen it since. And Master McCarty actually Joe McCarty from uh, Region Six who was Grandmaster Bowen's student originally, um, he shared it. Grandmaster's license plate forever for as long as i can remember um and i'm sure before that was i train and so we're like well why don't we talk about why all of us train ourselves we'll say i train and what we train for um you know and you know i know anthony i had a real tough time about because we were like the first two that did them at the studio when we were creating the video <laughs> so we're sitting there trying to think of about on the spot. Danny kind of sprung that one on us like, hey, do the video right now. We're like, oh, okay, I don't have anything. I haven't thought anything. 
So yeah, uh, but it was it's basically trying to express the idea that what we all train for and express that idea that he has always put out there of just training and it's I train for this, you know, and um, you know that was really the, the one of the it turned out that that's one of the, the kind of the the phrase and the other one that uh, Danny came up with or or you I don't remember Anthony which which who came up with it I just know I did <laughs> because you guys might have been more were more creative with is the the his legacy our future and that's kind of the other yeah. you know tagline that we've kind of come up with those are the two of them uh, that's great segue so let's talk about the significance of, of Grandmaster Bodwin in, in the Connecticut area. I, I was trying to look up some stuff. From what I can gather, he opened in some capacity in like 1965. Is that in that, in that age range? Yeah, that's pretty much, that, that's about right. When he, he got his black belt 60, in 63 in Korea, and then he, came, he was released from the air. It was still in the Air Force, came back, started a school in Roswell, New Mexico, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was in Roswell. And then when he got back to Waterbury, he opened the school in 65, but it moved around a ton until, even, even up until when I, was, I first started, when I was a little, little kid, it was down the street from our current studio. It was what's now a laundromat. <laughs> uh, it was down the street. And up until, I think, 80... 85, Anthony, you think? Before my time. Yeah, I, <laughs> so I don't, you know, I have the timeline, but I haven't memorized it yet. So. <laughs> I think 85 <laughs> is when he actually bought the property and, okay. and moved the studio there. Yeah. It might have been 86, but 85, 86. So it's been in its current location since then. And it's pretty much remained the, the same, like there's been no updates or just. Um, we did we did the floor uh we just got real mats but you had carpet for a long time um like hat you know like as thin carpet as you could get on the concrete for a long time that, that was the second ca carpet though the first carpet was uh was um was brown right and then we had the red and then there's the red <laughs> and then he got um a judo place went out of uh, out of business and they gave us their mats it was like the two and a half inch thick like judo mats yeah. so we had that for a while and that was the worst that was it was really it was That's soft yeah. it was not great for tung we had they that were for great a while. for doing takedowns on people yeah. yes yes it was. <laughs> and then and then and then we just we got the puzzle mats finally but uh other than that a coat of paint not much has changed right. well uh, the the also the the you know the um if you if the only place you can still see it is in the um, in the back corner. Um, if anybody's actually been in the studio, where the, the the black there's the black belt wall, and the the left corner, if you're looking at the black belt wall, there's wood panel, and the the, the entire studio used to have the wood panel. Yeah. Everything was wood panel. Yeah. We still have a lot of wood panel. No, no, <laughs> but everything. Yeah. Every wall. It's like a 1970s basement. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Hey, Rich Hamill said Bank Street. The I guess the old place was on Bank Street. Does that sound right? Yeah, yeah that was the, the Bank Street, Tudor Street. Yeah. I just got some pictures of the Tudor Street uh, studio the other day from uh, um, who is it? Someone sent me a couple of pictures of it, so I have it for. I have to put that out there. So yeah. So talk about some of the people you know, said. You said eighty five. Some of the people that have. I guess came before that as students of Grandmaster Bodwin and, and some of the people that trained there from, from 85 on um, as far as significance. Well, I, I, I see you almost want to go, but you can even go back a little further because you mentioned Grandmaster Bodwin just in, 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 uh, in Connecticut. Um, and it's actually all currently at Anthony's house. Um, uh, I managed to go to his, 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 his house and his wife let me, get a collection of all of the tungsten memorabilia he had because he um Graham Ashburn was a uh, he didn't like to throw anything away so he kept everything and I went through all of the all the stuff and, and, and cattle and took a lot of it it wasn't cattle it was unorganized but it had all the history and it started actually in stuff in 19 um from almost from from the 60s forward 
you know, the, with Grandmaster, before Grandmaster Shin had actually even come to the United States, there was letters and, and information from Grandmaster Shin to him in the U.S. And then Wang Gi with the Mudokuan Federation with Grandmaster Wong, because he was the secretary and I think a regional director, and he was very big in and high up in the Mudokuan Federation back before World Tong Suo. So he was a, he was big on on the, on that stage before we got to World Tong Suo. And you know, there's history of you know, you got good picture. Yep. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's awesome. That's uh, Kwan Jin and Wang Yi, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. So that was at one of the Waterbury tournaments. Yeah, that's when like Wang Yi came to the tournament. Yep. Yeah, I have a, I I have a ton of stuff just sitting right here. You know, yeah, uh, feel free to share anything that uh, is of note. I remember Dan when you were going through that stuff. I was. I'm a huge karate nerd. Like I, I, I geek out on this stuff and, and, and you would send me pictures of, like you said, uh, correspondence from the seventies with grandmaster Shin and stuff from Juan key. And it's like, I was going to say, I got, I got, I was going to say, I have the, you know, that one right there. That's awesome. That looks like the other side of the picture Anthony just took. Um, yeah. And he, um, and then when, you know, he joined, you know, so even, you know, back then he had, you know, you know, Master McCarty, who's still, you know, in World, who's in World Tong Snow down Region 6, you know, he was kind of Master B's right-hand guy till the mid-80s, and then he kind of retired a, a little bit, he, you know, wanted to focus on his, uh, on his um, religious, you know, um, calling for a while, and he was uh, a minister, I, I believe, down there for, uh, for a while, and then he, he eventually came back into World Tong Sudo, right. um, you know, he, he was a, he was a big world home school person. Obviously, Master Valentin was is one of his students. You know, Master T, Master Haney. Um, there's a lot of people who are no longer with World Home Sudo who are still you know students of his. Carl Jenkins, who's very close to you down there. Yeah. Um, in a. Um, he's in Maryland. Yeah, he's in Maryland. He's not too far from you guys. Um, uh, you know, um, Steve Volker, who's in you know. You know, Connecticut, Charlie Ferreira. There's a lot of outside of World Tungsto people that were still students of his and trained with him. And, uh, you know, um, you know, that he had an influence with and he trained with and did stuff with. So there's a lot Richard of Byrne. Richard Byrne. Yep. Richard Byrne up in the, in the, you know, in Boston. Yeah. That, that's a whole story at some point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Richard so, Byrne was a character. Can you think of some of the like I'm I'm sure people dropped in all the time or you know from time to time from all over the world? <laughs> oh yeah, oh, ab absolutely. You know, um, um, you know, when, it was always a thing when we'd have our black belt clinics and we'd bring in guests that he would always like to to see the guests and and you know, bring him by the studio and, and talk to him if you know we brought him in for a little longer, get him to do a class, get him to do this. So that was always a uh, um, you know, Master Khan's been, been through there, Master Javi, you know, uh, you know, your, your, your wife, when she, she, when she came, she came up at Aaron, uh, you know, plen a a pretty much anybody who came in for a black belt clinic got, came in, uh, came through as a guest and saw the studio and that kind of thing. Um, and then our regular classes was, you know, our Saturday classes, especially, you just never knew who was going to walk through the door. Someone would walk in and say, oh, yeah, I'm on the wall. And they'd be like, you know, third row on the wall, you know, and they would, they hadn't been there in 10 years, you know, you'd always, you'd always get people just popping in to say hi to Master B, you know, students from 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago, and it would just, they would just pop in from time to time, which was always great. And they'd tell us some stories and he would always uh, make time for them. It was great. It was, uh, it was, it was always, uh, it was always a history lesson. Yeah. Uh, out, I know outside of the the Dojang, I'm sure in traveling with him, you you got reckon or he got recognized uh, in airports and places, even outside. So for those of you who don't know, uh, he was also a teacher for many many years outside of World Tung Sudo. Um, you talk about like what what he did. He was Doctor Bob, right? <laughs> yeah, he was he was he was a doctor. He did a lot of um um uh. He was, he did training training for man, like management like how to how to how to how to be a how to be a leader how to be a manager how to talk to people um you know I, I think I mentioned it 
I don't remember if I mentioned it on the um when we were talking about the um the campaign if it came up then or what the last but one of the things that he always did whenever you went out to if you ever went out to dinner with him is as soon as he met the um the the wait staff he always asked them their name and then remembered it and called them by that the entire the entire time you were there because it just made that connection to everybody it was something he learned to do when he was teaching classes he would memorize everybody's name by the end of their first class which was just impressed me to, to no end because i can't remember names to, to you know to save my life yeah that's definitely uh that's definitely a skill you either have it or you don't <laughs> and yet he he constantly de developed it you know and one of the best i think you know one of the best kind of w interesting meals or at times out with him and it was me and you anthony when we took him down to a works yep and he met uh um Brian. Brian, yep. Yeah. So you want you want to do do that one kind of? Uh, yeah, there's a place, uh, O'Rourke's Diner. It's one of my favorites. Been going there since I was a kid. It's been on uh, Drive Diner, Drive In, whatever that uh, that TV show is. And uh, the, the the gentleman there is he's uh, an eccentric uh, cook, and um, we've gotten to be good friends over the years. Uh, um, it's near Wesleyan University, so you get, he gets a lot of people that come through there. I met Clint Eastwood there. Um, he was at, uh, doing a, a speech at Wesleyan, and um, and uh, so there's a lot of people. And and over the years, uh, Brian, his his health was uh, going downhill, so he found the martial arts, and he was doing a lot of different martial arts, um, a lot of finger lock, like a lot of Wally J kind of finger lock stuff, and and uh, our niece and stuff like that. And so we'd always go in there, and he would always he'd always uh, bring in one of the guys and they would do the technique of the week right in the middle. He'd be serving like breakfast to all these people. Next thing you know, when he's got one of his waiters on the ground, you know, tapping out and stuff like that. So we'd always go and do this little, you know, martial arts exchange for years. And so we brought a uh, quantum name. I wanted them to meet and stuff like that. So they, they got to talking and uh, you know, and uh, we got some really great, uh, good photos. Some of the best photos, uh, you know, there's some of my favorite people. So we got them all in the same spot and it, it was, it was nice and nice mutual exchange you know yeah. yeah he was one of those guys that even if you didn't know him personally you he made you feel like you know you were you were important and that you know you were special like he was going to remember your name the next time that you met and and he he always did <laughs> he did have a knack for making you making you feel special and i always tell i tell this and i, I mean this in the most highest regard right I always, I always thought of Quanjanim, and I, the closest thing I could uh, equate it in a lot of ways is like a, my dog, right? <laughs> my dog is always happy to see me no matter what, and he always brings the smile and the enthusiasm, and it didn't matter who it was. You walked through the door and Quanjanim saw you, he lit up, he made you lit up, everybody felt good, and I, I've never experienced that in any other, any other person. Like I said, the closest thing is when I come home, my dog, he's always happy to see me. And uh, Master B always made me feel that way, you know, and I think he did that with a lot of people. And like I said, I think that is one of the highest compliments I could, I could pay him. That's awesome. Now, uh, leading up to when he passed, uh, was he still, I know, Dan, you taught classes and, uh, and uh, Anthony, I'm sure you did too. Was he still teaching class on a regular basis? Yep. He, he, he always, you know, as much as obviously, you know, it's funny, there were certain times of the year where his travel, you know, being grandmaster was, was heaviest. And that was usually the, the fall time frame. We usually started the end of August and would go all the way to December. Like last year, his, I, I think he had, I want to say maybe three weekends where he didn't travel that, that in that time frame, And it wasn't, and it was some crazy trips. You know, he, he traveled at one point, he traveled from, I think it was a lot within three weeks, he went from Alaska to, um, uh, where was it in Z South Africa, um, South, A South Africa to Mexico and then to region eight, yeah. you know, it's like, well, that's an easy one going, going for region eight. eight Crisscross <laughs> time zones, like every other week, it was crazy. And, you know, so at, during that time of the year, he, he, you know, usually in the fall, he wasn't teaching as, as much, but when we had the, you know, when it was the, you know, the calmer times of the year, he was, he was there every Tuesday and he was there every, every Saturday. 
pretty much unless you know you know he couldn't be but he lo- those were the two times he would always he had he had those nights since oh jesus probably the early 90s i think those were the two nights he would always teach nice. um well, he, he taught the high rank class the friday night before he passed we all worked out together and then the, he actually i was supposed to uh teach with him on saturday morning my daughter was at a volleyball tournament or something he's like yeah take the day off go go play volleyball so he took my class for me and we usually would train that saturday but right up and basically right up into the day he went to the hospital he was teaching so yeah the, lynn, um, lynn uh, prifty says he also did after school programs as well yeah, yeah. We, we did we had an, he had a number of those that were going yeah, he's a better man than me for those. <laughs> he, yeah, right. he put a lot of time in those, that's for sure. You know, yeah, that's a lot of work. About just mounds and mounds of white belts, like over and over and over and over again. And yeah, that, that's a Herculean task. <laughs> he had a lot of patience. <laughs> so, as far as when when he passed, and you talked about the the day with George getting promoted. And I, I went back and, and was look, going through some videos. I Today I watched some videos of Quan Jinim's Corner with Master Valentin. And then I watched that uh, promotion with George. And, um, you, you know, it's I, I've met George from him being with, with uh, Quan Jinim at Region 8 events and Worlds and Masters Clinics. And I, I don't know him personally, but you know, just watching that video and, and seeing you there and Master Valentin there, like I, I, I got teared up knowing that, you know, in hindsight, that that was the pretty much the last like major thing that was had happened before you guys were kind of shut out. Um, you know, looking back now, you know, how does that, uh, that event kind of uh, feel? It just doesn't feel real, does it? <laughs> It, it's it's you know it's really strange because it was also just when, when everything with covid was just getting started too so it was like we were all trying to be nice and not be in there or not have too many people in there or not you know i think at one point i don't know if we got into any of the videos that got out there that master Island is like don't put a video of this out here we don't want to show that we got too many people in the room <laughs> back when you know still having 20 people in a room you know with no masks on was it was allowable <laughs> I, I know instead of the hug, he gave him kind of the Wakanda forever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> we, uh, you know, and yeah, it, that, that was, that was, uh, that was a tough, that it was tough. You know, it was, I was, I was, I was really proud of George, um, you know, that we got managed to, we still did it, that he got that recognition because he, he did deserve it. It was just very tough that, you know, it had to be under those, those circumstances. Right very bittersweet you know uh it being so close to his passing and 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 george and and kwanjin were so close um you know we've all been cheated out of stuff this year uh but you know i think you know kwanjin not being able to tie george's belt on there um you know it's still i i know it's just it'll never be you know it's never going to be quite right you know and uh it was, it was, I'm sure it was a very hard day for him and it was for all of us, you know? Yeah. I, I can't imagine how hard that was. I, you know, it's obviously not the same, but you know, at least master Valentin was there uh, to, to do it and, and, you know, and not someone else. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm sure that was, was, was still pretty, pretty special. Yeah. We're lucky. <laughs> we're very lucky here in, in, in region nine that, we really do have, I mean, our, our motto now, you know, is a uh, family nine. nine and uh, it, it really is very tight here. Um, you know, with the, you know, existing members and past members, you know, we, we really lean on each other and, uh, and uh, everybody comes through for each other. And, and, you know, I, you know, I think, you know, if you always ask your, your students, especially once they get the black belt or further, you know, Hey, why'd you start training and why are you still training? The answer is almost never the same. Right. And, uh, you know, it's, I think, you know, the, the, the family aspect of it for me is, you know, as important as any, any of the aspects of it now. And it's so strong here. 
you know, we actually talked about, you know, hey, we should think about, uh, you know, we're going to retire, where we're going to go. And so we make a big pros and cons checklist of where we, you know, where we might end up. And I'll tell you, the top of my list was I didn't want to leave my, I didn't want to leave my karate people, my family here. And I was like, that's like, it was probably the number one factor in me saying, hey, you know what, we're just never going to, we're not going to think about this for a long time because I, I don't want to leave these people. And, uh, you know, you're, 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 yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, with that, Anthony, you know, it's, um, this way I, I was looking at the picture the other, the other day, um, from, from, uh, from Laura and my, and my wedding, the one we had, the one we had Disney and, um, you know, we could have a max of, you know, the wedding, the version of the wedding we had, you get a max of 18 people. And so we had like some of Laura's family, some of my family, and we're like, we, we put it out to everybody on both sides. We're like, hey, we got 18 spots, you know, who wants to be, who wants to be here? And we got a lot of like, well, I can't go. I don't want to go. I don't want this. I don't want to spend the money. Whatever. And so we're like, okay, we're going to go to our karate. We're going to go to our karate family. Cause those are the, those are the people who had all said to us, Hey, just let us know if you, if, if, if you know, we'll be there if we, if, if, you, if you need us. And so half of the, you know, one third of the people at this 18 person wedding was Anthony and his wife, Grandmaster Bowen and his wife, and Master Valentin and Mrs. Master. So, you know, of, of, of the of the 18 people we'd have there, a third of it was was our Karai family because you know they were closer and they wanted to be there and you know everything else versus you know some of our our uh, our biological families that you know for whatever reason decided not to. Right, <laughs> family we choose, you know. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. And the best, I think one of the, there's two great stories though from that, that I, that I do have to say. So the first was, and, and we love Graham, I love Graham Master Moon, and I had planned it. I told them, okay, sir, we're all going on this flight. We're doing this. This is the hotel we're staying in. When we got to, we got to Orlando. He had forgot to book the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> so he's at the bus at the Magical Express in the Orlando airport saying, well, we're supposed to go to this hotel. And they're like, um, did you get a reservation? What's your reservation number, sir? Try to help him. And he's like, oh, I didn't make one. So they made, I think Master Valentin might have had, I think, were you there with him at, at that point? Or was it just yeah, Master it, Valentin? It was a mess. It was a mess. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then the other best part was Anthony's, Anthony's um, um, mom used to work for ESPN. So she got him the, 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 the discount on the special um Caribbean beach resort room the pirate room tiny little pirate boat bed. <laughs> it's a pi tiny pirate bed <laughs> and both Anthony and his wife are like six feet over six feet tall and they're like oh. feet are hanging off the bed <laughs> yeah. that's hilarious it was stories we'll always remember <laughs> yeah for sure well you know this year when we came up for the funeral and that was at the end of January and we're all just like man, I can't wait to see all of you in March and just train in his memory and hang out and be able to kind of decompress and unpack all this. And then everything hit. And you, I know you, Anthony, you were supposed to, it was supposed to be your first year at master's clinic. Um, and that, none of that happened. And then, you know, event after event got knocked down. Uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's been tough, but you know, I feel like most of us have made the most of it. As far as the studio goes, um, what's the status of it now? Like, is, did you guys have to clear it out? Is the, is the studio still as it was or? It's, it's pretty much still as it was. Um, okay. uh, pretty much we, you know, there's some stuff that we took, every, you know, we took out of there because we didn't know what was going to happen when, sure. when they, they the, the lawyer said no one could be in there. So we did, you know, a lot of, we got everybody's like personal, you know, weapons that people had left there, you know, stuff that was personal items to people that had been left there that, you know, we figured out, oh, we're going back in train, you know, this and that. Um, we got all of that out of there, but no, the mats are still there, the floor, everything else pretty much is still in there. The pictures are on the wall. Um, it, it, it's kind of, it's a weird stasis. Right. You know, and I know when we were in there doing the, the video, it was, I don't know for you, Anthony, but for me, it felt very, like out of time, like it was kind of like lost a little bit because it was just, it was exactly as it had been the last time we were in their training. It just hadn't been used in four months, five months. 
it 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 needs it needs to breathe again it really does it's like it's just it's just this like stale feeling in there and uh, i just we need to get some energy back in there and you know we're really lucky we, you know when we talk about when the, we didn't know i think there was a point where we actually thought it was gone you know it was, you know yes. we weren't sure we were going to be able to buy it from the family and uh and there was other conflicting better offers you know, for the property than, than we felt that we could, you know, take on. And um, we were lucky over, it took months, and but we really do. I think there was a couple month period there where we actually thought we'd never step foot in there again. And uh, um, it looks like, you know, after a lot of hard work and some negotiating and a lot of good faith on uh, Mrs. Bowen's and, and uh, you know, uh, George and Debbie and everybody working hard to um, we all we all knew there was something more than just a building there, and uh, so we found a way to get to the other side, and we're 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 getting real close. We're getting real close. So yeah, I want to talk about that, but real quick, Daniel said the calendar was still on still on March, so that's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I think we had we still had on the wall the um, the signups that were supposed to happen in April for Action Hero photos that we were going to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's tough. So how did you how how did you come to the point where you you guys decided that you were going to take on this project? Was it was it more like well someone has to do it? <laughs> I, you know I I just I think we were all pretty much in agreement that it had to get done, and it was just going to get done right. And then you know as you start trying to peel away the uh, the particulars are about it. Um, it, it, it just kind of, it kind of fell into place the way I think it, it, it should, it, 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 it could be successful. And that's what it was. Not only we had to do it, but we had to make sure it was going to be successful long-term. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we had a lot of people that, you know, wanted to be a part of it, but, you know, um, and they are, it's just that, you know, to try to figure out the best mix to go forward and it took a while, but I think we got it. And um, I, I don't think there was any doubt that we wanted it to happen. We were gonna try to make it happen. It was just whether or not we would get the opportunity to make it happen uh, was the only thing I think that was ever in doubt. So, so how, did you, how did you get the news that you were gonna be able to go forward? You know, I had, uh, I had, uh, breakfast with Mrs. Bodwin, <laughs> we, you know, and we, we sat around and had some uh, croissants and we were drinking some coffee and we were just going back and forth and we just kind of try to try to hash it out between the, you know, the parties. And, uh, and she finally said, yeah, you know, I, I, I want to keep his legacy alive more than, you know, whatever else everybody else is offering. And, and, and we, despite what the lawyer says, despite, yeah, yeah. We had, it seemed like we had a lot of people working against us, but uh, <laughs> I think cooler heads prevailed and, you know, um, you know, I don't think there's a, a lot of opportunity for us to uh, to make a difference. You know, Master B made a difference. He made a difference, and you know, I, I always I'm a pretty cynical guy sometimes, and you know, I see people. You know, they live a full, rich life and they pass away, and they always have. You know, that you know, they're saying, you know, they'll get, you know work for your job, they'll replace you in two weeks afterwards, and all this, you know, very cynical stuff. But he was such an important person in my life and so many people that I know and such a, you know, uh, agent for good, I guess, you know, that he, he doesn't deserve to just be kind of forgotten. You know, I, I think uh, what he left for all of us, we owe it back to him to pass it to more people, <laughs> you know, and, and that's what it is. We're just, we're not the end all. We're just the, we're the bridge. We're the bridge between what it was and whoever is the future is. And, you know, me and Dan and the current Kodanja there are, we're the bridge. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm excited to see where, you know, it is in the future. Um, and we're just, I think, uh, stewards for the moment. You know, and, and you made a really good good, good point there, Anthea, yes, talking about just the good things that, you know, were done. And, you know, I know you had mentioned this one to, to something to, to <clears throat> Tell about Tim is you know, it, that that's kind of the 
the one of the driving things I think that, that both Anthony and I want to do with the studio going forward is, you know, neither one of us are looking to make this our our, our full time job, and we're not looking to, you know, we're not looking to to you know for this to be the you know. Um, you know, to be a second, you know, to, to, to buy another, to buy a new, to buy us all new boats, you know, we're not looking as this, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a huge financial windfall for us, really, we want to, you know, do that, you know, try to put the service forward that Grandmaster always talked about. One of the things is, you know, you mentioned we had, we did, we would do a flower sale at Easter and the proceeds for that were usually split every year. Usually half of it would go to, you know, like half of it one year went to, Get, get in the mats, right? Uh, where we yeah. use those to, to, to put the new set of mats down. The other half of it goes to a scholarship that we had from one of our one of our students who, um, uh, student Paul DeLeo, who um, actually passed away in class. He was in the studio training, had a massive heart attack in class on, on, on one of the nights. And so we started a scholarship in his, in his honor that um, covers, you know, tournaments, testing, you know, that kind of stuff for one student every year. So Money, the money from the flower sale goes towards that. Um, you know, we would do, um, Connecticut State Police usually do a big toy drive every year. We would do, we would do that. You know, Grandmaster will always like, like doing that. We would do, you know, there's some other, you know, other uh, things like that that we've done. I, I, uh, Anthony and myself last year, we actually did it at his house last year. Um, we did a big, uh, we did a, ch a charity um, event for Connecticut Children's Hospital. Um, so we have, you know, we want to, I think one of the tenants we want with his, you know, his legacy is to care, is to do that and just try to do more of those kind of things, um, and put that good forward in, in that, in that manner. I think that's one of our goals. So, so let's talk about how you guys are going to get to that goal. I know last week I was, I was pumped when you told me that everything was, was going to be happen on Saturday. And man, I, I, I saw the live video and, and like I, the excitement was for me, I was, I was so excited for you guys and to see all the people that were watching and, uh, and in mean, like, how, how was that, the, the feeling? And then afterwards seeing people actually donating to the cause, uh, you know, you, did it kind of validate like, Hey, you know, this, this is what we should be doing. Not that you didn't have a doubt, that you had a doubt, but you know, I'm sure you were still, you were still like, is this going to work? <laughs> you probably still are. <laughs> you know, I, I had, I had, a, you know, Dan will talk about, I had a lot of mixed feelings about, you know, reaching out for help, especially now, you know, I know in so many of our, you know, uh, World Tongue Sudo friends and everybody is, is, they're struggling now. And for us to reach out and ask for more of them in a time that's just just so trying for everybody, um, I had I had a hard time with it, uh, you know. But so many people were saying they not only did they think it was you know the, we needed to do it and uh, they wanted to be a part of it and they want you know it, 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 I think it helps with their feelings to want to pay back and pay forward and and. And, you know, if anything they can do to help keep Master Bowen's legacy alive, they, they, you know, we got a lot of encouragement. And then we did the launch, which was really emotional. Uh, and I'm not a super outwardly emotional person, but, uh, you know, that, that hit pretty hard. And, um, and then the support, uh, you know, you know, getting donations from, you know, England and the Netherlands and every corner of the United States. And then people who don't even, you know, we had, uh, I think there was one gentleman from Florida who was just a tungsten opera practitioner, not part of our, you know, I don't know if he knows, he knows one of our friends and they sent money. And then people that don't, you know, didn't know anything about, you know, other than the, the passion that we have and the feelings that we had, they knew it was important to us. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it is kind of overwhelming and uh, it, you know, it, it gives you that, you know, hope for humanity type thing. It's one of those few things where you can just, it's just feels good. It, it feels good. And I'm, I'm proud to be a part of it. And I am even uh, I'm humbled by all the, the, the help, you know, and uh, it, it, it really is nice. Yeah. The, the, you, you said that really, really well, Anthony, it, it, 
it was an emotional thing to launch, especially when we went, you know, when we, we fi- finally saw that final version of that video that Dan, Dan had put together was just kind of like, oh man, that, that, <clears throat> that just hit really solid. And, uh, you know, seeing all of the students and people that, you know, former students and current students and, you know, acquaintances that were jumping in and, and commenting and sharing and, and, and donating and, you know, people that reached out, they're like, hey, I want to just donate. Can I send it to, you know, can I donate without going through there? Because, you know, this and this, can I do that? What, what, how can I donate? Hey, and we just keep sharing it. And, you know, all these things go, go in some cycles. So we want to just try to keep it in everybody's mind and keep it out there that, you know, this is, this is an ongoing thing thing you know we're you know we're trying to keep this going and we want you know um you know we want to uh kind of let everybody be part of this you know that's why we kind of tiered some of the things the way we did is you know we want you know every, everyone who, who donates is you know they're gonna their name's gonna be somewhere you know but if you want you know just different placements different tiers different different you know um uh locations where we we're gonna we're gonna do these because we want everyone to be honored and everyone to feel appreciated that is is in there you know and and, and you know th- thanks dan for sharing the for sharing the link you know so that's we, right uh, he is on yeah. it man i like it oh he, he he's great also also remember um on a quick side note daniel greenwolf uh if you go to his facebook page you'll find the magic show he's going to be doing this weekend put the that's link up <laughs> Tell them to put is, the link up. <laughs> yeah, but as I say, Dan, put the put the link up for your yeah, if you have a link for your show there, too. And I'll, and I'll share it on the page as well. Yeah, um, he, 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 he's, he's, he's a he's a really fun magician. He has a lot of friends. He's gonna be doing a live special Christmas uh um magic show, a free magic show that you know, just asking for people to donate as part of it to the to the cause um to support it. Um but you know, just giving everybody the opportunity because, as you said, we we missed. Uh, you know, we, we we didn't have the Masters Clinic. We didn't have, you know, black belt clinics and world championships and all these events that. You know, everyone was counting on to get you know to see each other. I remember we had a regional phone call. Um, I was actually at I was actually at the gym when uh, Master Valentin. It was like a Tuesday or Wednesday afternoon, I think. And, uh, it, it wasn't even like a, a nighttime phone call. It was like, like randomly at like four o'clock in the afternoon, Master Valentin called everybody to call the, uh, uh, call, you know, call into this phone call. It was when he was telling us the master's clinic was going to be canceled this year. And I, I remember sitting there and I, I said, to, I said, you know, I, and we all understood why it was happening. I said, you know, and, and, and there were some people who were very, very emotional and very, you know, that, you know, this is the wrong thing. And it's like, I said, you know, I said, master, you know, to Master Valentine, I said to everybody, I said, you know, the, the thing that hurt the most with the Masters game being canceled, yeah, it's it's great to train and all that, but, you know, the opportunity just to, because there's people that, you know, I'm close with, that I'm sure you're close to, everybody was close with, to have that, to not have that opportunity to, to do that extra grieving mourning process of seeing some of those people. Right. Um. I think was the, t- the toughest part of that. And then, you know, everything else get, getting shut down. And then, you know, it's, 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 it's been um, tough in some of those regards, but, um, you know, as, as I said, I think putting this out there to everybody was a way to maybe let everybody feel they're, you know, doing something for Quanjanim or with Quanjanim to be part of that legacy. Right. You know, because you know we have the black belt wall and that's everybody that, that trained under him and got a black belt but we're kind of we're going to make another spot that's going to be everybody that helped and donated and supported to carry this forward and carry it on you know anthony has some ideas of where he's gonna where we're gonna put that where we're gonna set that up and how we're gonna make that look 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 nice so let's let's talk about you know if if someone donates what what are your plans for the the building um, cause I know you're, you have a, a goal of April to open April of 2021. So if, if someone donates, what are, what are your plans to, uh, to use the money for? Anthony? Well, I think, um, you know, uh, COVID, uh, we, we want to expand the training floor a little bit. Um, and, uh, so we, we have some non-structural walls we're going to 
take down and move out and just kind of open the place up a little bit. So it'll give us some more room to, uh, to train. I think that's one of the most important things we need to do. Um, there's some, you know, just straight up maintenance that needs to be done. You know, the, uh, the, uh, the roof, I know he hasn't put on a roof and it wasn't brand new in 1985 and it's, <laughs> you know, so, uh, that, that needs a little TLC, you know, just, uh, a, a lot of general maintenance, um, you know, and, uh, just to get it, just to get it functional again, you know, not that it couldn't be, but I think under COVID rules, we, we would like the extra space so we could run some better sized classes and serve, you know, serve the people and, uh, uh, and then all, you know, the heating and the, the roof and stuff like that. So I, you know, it really depends on at first, I mean, we, we may be limited by funds. You know, the first thing is we have to buy it, right? So we have to, we have to get enough money just to buy it. And then, um, then we're just going to prioritize, you know, have to have like to have, you know, and, uh, and then we'll try to chip away at them, you know, one at a time. Gotcha. Well, we are, uh, we're, we're getting close to the hour mark. Um, and I want to thank you guys again for, for joining me. Yeah, there's a couple of fir first. So Dan, you're other than Grandmaster Strong, you're the first repeat guest. <laughs> and then Anthony, you're the, you're the first, you know, you're, you, you got the first year under your belt, but you're the first non-master, uh, you know, to, to grace the, 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 the interviews so you know you got two I'm, two first <laughs> I'm, I'm honored uh you know what? thank you for doing this for us you know um i know i you know i well i just really appreciate it i mean uh, it's important i know i know you you care about the uh the project and and always uh always giving your time to uh to the, the association and and its members and stuff like that so thank you absolutely dan any final words you know Again, you know, thank you, you know, just all the times throughout the, you know, the, this year that you and I have talked, I've sent you, sent you messages and, you know, um, everybody out there, you know, we appreciate everybody that's donated. We appreciate everybody that shared it. We appreciate everybody that's, that's, that's thinking of it, you know, um, you know, we got, we got some time, so, you know, but keep, keep, keep it in your back of your mind, keep it out there. Um, you know, we really just want to secure that legacy and keep that going. Um, there's a lot there's a lot to it and there's a lot of history, you know, I was, you know, I, I, I you know, just the, the, you know, stories and that kind of stuff. I, I, I could, you know, sit and, you know, I could, I could do, you know, three hours of stories with, with, with Quanch and I'm sure anything could do just, you know, do, do that as well. You know, Master McCarty and Master Jenkins and all these other guys have, you know, so much history there, you know, and, there's so much, so many legacy things that we want to, you know, keep going and bring back. You know, we, you know, we he used to do a tournament, and I think we ran it 52 years. It went, it, it had run 52 times. You know, we want to bring, you know, get that back again. We had a Cry Kids Olympics that ran ran for oh, that had to have run for for over 30 years, if not more, maybe 35 years. I think he ran Cry Kids Olympics, this little tournament, just a kids only tournament that he started in in you know, in May, you know, we want to bring, you know, get some of these back because, you know, Master Valentin even talks about that, you know, Karate Kids Olympics was, you know, where he met Mrs. Master. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, so he talks about, you know, he has a special place in his heart, you know, because he always talks about that at that time. So we want to keep, get some of these things that, that were traditions and, and, you know, we're, we're, we're there to keep them going. So, um, well, I, I think you guys are the, the men for the job. I know I, I've got to imagine, Dan, you're probably the longest running, like as far as he, he probably has students that were his students longer, but for someone being under the roof of Bodwin Academy at Karate, you're probably the longest tenured person as far I, as students. Yeah, I, I, th I, th I think so. I was, you know, I, I, tra I trained when I was a little kid, you know, for you know, three or four years. Actually, I found my Mutaquan stuff back <laughs> a little while ago, my back before we were in World Home Show when we were still in Mutaquan. And then, you know, when I came back when I was a little older in 1990, I was from then forward right. with him. And um, 2001 was when I, uh, World Championships, actually 2002, um, World Championships just after that was when him and I really uh, organized and started restructuring and figuring out how we we're going to move everything forward because some of the other 
masters and people that were had been with him had kind of you know stepped away or retired so we you know uh him and i kind of um you know sat at dan marino's restaurant at the orlando world championships and uh figured out who we're going to have take over for instructing and move forward from there that's really kind of when i would really firmly took over being his right hand guy so it's been a long journey well that's awesome again guys thanks so much for joining me tonight uh the link is in the comments share this share the post share the link uh daniel also shared the link for the um the fundraiser he's doing this week again thanks guys for joining me i really appreciate it all right thank you thank you thank you